going to use. So we're all right. Okay, well, if that's answered your questions on that one, then I will share the screen and we will start with another discussion. Uh, let's talk about this one. This is a fun one. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> inside edgeware on the inside tire on trailers and drive axles. If you have wide base tires, it'll be on the inside edge of the wide base tire. We started seeing this back in the 80s. And as we fought with it and tried to figure out what was going on, we discovered that at that time, most of the problem was because the wheel bearings were improperly adjusted. And so we started figuring out a process to adjust bearings to try and get this corrected. Now, if you have the type of bearing assembly that has a sleeve between the inner and outer bearing, most of those bearings are going to be tight enough because you simply tighten it up to 300 foot pounds and the sleeve sets the bearing. If you have an adjustable bearing, we find 80% of the bearings are too loose and we have a lot of cupping. But we figured out a way to adjust bearings. And more and more trucks are coming out with the sleeves. So the bearing issue is less than it was before. Not solved, but less. Starting in about 2000, 2003, somewhere in that area, we started seeing this wear on trailers. Big time. And we would go out and check the bearings, and the bearings were okay. Took us a little while to figure out what was going on, but it turned out that as we looked at it and looked at it and started gathering data, this was consistently on trucks with a Hendrickson suspension. Hendrickson trailer suspension. What Hendrickson did in about that time, well, there's a wide base tire that started cupping on the inside shoulder, and then it turned into diagonal wipes across the tire. So this is just the same wear pattern advanced. Okay. At about 2000 or so, Hendrickson brought out the in-tracks and van-tracks suspensions, which were lighter suspensions. In order to lighten the suspension up, this trailing arm is narrower, this bracket is narrower, the bolt bushing is narrower, and the axle diameter is actually bigger. They took the standard five-inch axle tube, made it six inches, but made the wall thinner, like a Coke can. So that axle, in this picture, is 15 pounds lighter than the standard axle. More flex. More flex. As you hit bumps in the road, that axle flexes, and it chops the inside edge off the tire. The simple way to identify this is that the axle is actually welded into the suspension, because if you use the standard suspension, now here's the standard one, you'll notice how much wider the trailing arm is, how much wider apart these brackets are, smaller diameter axle with a thicker wall, and it's held in place with U-bolts. Well, I'm gonna back up to the other one, oops. If you use U-bolts on this thin axle, it crimps the axle. So they had to weld it because they couldn't U-bolt it. Now, once we discovered that was what was consistently going on, we had to figure out a way to fix it. Now, we're just shade tree mechanic guys here. We're just trying to figure out how to fix the problem. And what we learned was that if we take angle iron and weld it on top of the axle, and weld it on top of the axle, it stiffens the axle up and we don't get the cupping problem anymore. In other words, we're putting back the 15 pounds they took out to make it lighter. The rest of the suspension doesn't bother me. The thinner trailing arms, the narrower this or that, it doesn't seem to be the problem. The problem is inherent in the axle itself. Now, for years, we've just been able to guy call up, so what do I do? And we send him this information and he welds it up and the problem goes away. And it's always been Hendrickson. But Hendrickson makes the lightest suspension available 
for trailers in North America. And because they're so light and inexpensive, everybody keeps buying them to put on the trailers. So the competition now, Ridewell and Holland, are starting to build six inch axles themselves to compete to get the market share. And I'm starting to get complaints on their axles with the same issue. Now that was the trailer story. We started getting the same complaints on drive axles in about 2007. Inside edge wear on the inside part of the drive tire. That's a continental tire. There's a Bridgestone tire showing the cupping on the inside shoulder. There's a Goodyear tire. Now they were interesting because you notice the outside tire out here is just beautiful. And the inside tire has major wear on this first line of lugs, but the shoulder's okay. This is the same problem. The, the casing is just flexing because of the extra weight being carried and pushed on that inside tire. And then some of this cupping is carrying out into some of the outside lugs, giving us an alternate lug pattern. But it's the same problem. There's a Yokohama tire doing the same kind of cupping. Then there's another Bridgestone showing the same thing. Now, when we started seeing this in 07, and we finally realized what was going on, I called the truck axle manufacturers and said, are you making a lighter drive axle housing? They said, yes. We have one that's nine and a half millimeters thick. We have one that's 11 millimeters thick. The 11 was the old standard, but starting about 1998, in response to the request from the truck manufacturers to make the trucks lighter, we switched to the nine and a half millimeter as the standard axle. It's about 20 pounds lighter per axle. From 98 until 2007, we didn't have this tower problem. So what changed in 2007 that caused this problem to show up? It was the introduction of the 726 EL Bridgestone tire, which is the first step toward a low rolling resistance tire. And then as all the other brands started introducing low rolling resistance fuel efficient tires, this pattern started manifesting itself every place. So it's a compatibility problem between a fuel efficient tire and a lightweight axle. If we go back to a non-fuel efficient tire, we can run the nine and a half millimeter axle without a problem. If we're gonna run the fuel efficient tire, we find we're much better off with the 11 millimeter axle and suffer that 20 pound weight problem in order to get better tire life. Now, if you have a Meritor or Detroit or uh, Packard axle stamped on top of the housing will be a number of 9.5 if this is nine and a half millimeters thick. Dana does not stamp their axles. You have to look at the ID plate to find out if it's the heavy axle or the standard axle. If you have the 11 millimeter axle, you'll find it stamped 11, and some of them you put a line and put damp on the bottom for millimeters. So Detroit, Meritor, and Packard all stamp the external of the axle housing so you can identify what it is. Then you have to look up the other stuff. If you're having inside edge wear and inside tire, probable causes. One could be loose wheel bearing. Two, could be axle flex. Three, if you're running wide base tires and you put two inch offset rims on them to set the wheels out further, they increase the flex that's occurring in the axle because they've got more leverage. So we don't like two inch offset wheels. There's a wide base tire and you can see the inside shoulder wear on both of those axles. You can see the start of the cupping. If you look right in here, you can see where it's stepping off. <coughs> Here's a Michelin. These were zero offset rims on a Volvo, cupping on the inside edge on a nine and a half millimeter axle. That's one side of the truck. There is the other side of the same truck with cupping on the inside edge. This was all axle flex on a nine and a half millimeter axle. One of the other things that occurs when you go to two inch offset rims on there, 
if you're doing wide baits. Is according to the axle engineers, if you have a nine and a half millimeter housing on a drive axle with duals or zero offset rims, you're rated to carry 20,000 pounds on that axle. On the 11 millimeter, you're also rated to carry 20,000 pounds on the axle. But if you go to two inch offset rims, you can't even carry 17,000 pounds. And the nine and 11 millimeter will only carry 17,000. You're losing load capacity by putting offset rims on. And on trailers, depending on if you have parallel bearings or tapered bearings, you can go from 25,000 to 19,000 capacity and 23,000 to 18,000. So putting offset rims on them is causing tire wear. It's also reducing the load capacity on your axle. Okay, let's stop the share and see if we got any questions or comments about that one. Does anybody see this kind of tire wear in your drive? Um, Mike, the last uh, uh, chart that we saw, can you just uh, explain the, the the wheel outset, what you mentioned, uh, where uh, the load is getting reduced? Okay. If everybody can see this, I'll try and draw it for you. I'm not a great artist, so it's okay. Here's the tire. Here's the rim. If the rim is centered, the load is in the center of the tire and the bearings inside the hub are evenly spaced, carrying this load in the middle of it. If on the other hand, you get an offset rim. Now what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take this whole tire and we're gonna narrow up one side and leave it like this. And now the tire is sticking out here further. So the bearing is still here, but now the center of the load is out here two inches further. So now this flex that's occurring because of the load on it is off center from the center of the bearing and you lose load capacity. Uh -huh. Got it. Thanks. You bet. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. If you have offset rims, and they're typically two inch offset rims, the center of the rim, I've drawn this way off, but the center of the rim. that the lug studs are going through is one inch thick. This piece here is one inch, okay? If you flip this rim around, you'll go from a two inch offset to a one inch inset because this one inch flips around in here. It's much better for the axle. It's much better for the bearings. We get much better tire wear and it doesn't rub on anything. The only thing you have to do is that the valve stem that you would air the tires is here. When you flip it around, you need to take the valve stem out and put an angle on it and run it out through the handhole so that you can air up the tire and it doesn't rub against the drum. Everybody okay with this? Yes. Any other questions on drive tire wear? Typically inside edge, inside tire. This is going entirely too smooth. I expected a lot more stuff. All right. In that case, let's see if I can ask a question here that will start a fight. I need some excitement. Let's see. We'll go to this one. All right, we'll see if we can get this to pop up. 